tell you the truth, you know, I control every aspect of my life. I control my family. I control my job. Uh, I even control my friends. This is no exception to the rule. I'm gonna control each and every individual out there, like a little, like a little puppet. As a matter of fact, you could call me the puppet master. Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else in hopes that it all ends in a satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they are a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we are only observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. Secret scenes may be included to flesh out the story and all character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And now with that, 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. Russell Hantz, a 36-year-old oil company owner from Texas, was a castaway on season 19, Survivor Samoa. But first, what is the point of Survivor to win the $1 million? Now, how does someone do this? Well, as established in season one, when explained by Jeff Probst, all they have to do is reach the end of the game and convince their jury to vote for them. That's it. Nothing more. Easier said than done, I admit. But I feel like it's something that needs to be said up front since it is so important to remember. So, we find ourselves in Samoa for the first time ever and right away we get some first impressions of the players as with Russell. There's a guy who looks as tough as nails. He looks like a pit bull. He's like, I wouldn't want to mess with him, that's for sure. I plan on making it as miserable as possible, making it hell for everybody to get what I want. Well, 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 Russell's going through with this, huh? I guess it wasn't just something he said in the preseason interviews, you know, and then decided not to follow up with. Some people do that, not Russell. Right away, Jeff says both tribes pick a leader. Galu picks Russell Swan and Foa Foa picks Mick. They do end up winning the reward challenge and upon arriving at their camp, everyone realizes that Mick sucks as the leader. I don't know, do you think we should do water yet or wait till tomorrow? Uh, I mean, not that we he's gonna, to... Yeah, I don't know if we need, but it wouldn't hurt, you know, after... Yeah, I think, uh... Some, yeah, well... Yeah. Um, uh, the captain leader, Mick, he's doing a very bad job. He sucks. He, he can't even talk to anybody hardly, you know? He, he's not organized, he's not a leader. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't know how to make good decisions. The camp's a piece of crap, but hey, I, I say a good job because I don't want to do nothing. I didn't come here to work. I came here to play. You got to talk about the lines uh, as soon as you step on this island. So my strategy is to be able to have a secret alliance with each one of these dumb girls. We can have something like a secret alliance. Okay. You know, the most yeah. important thing hmm. is honesty. So we can be strong for the beginning. We can look back at this moment right now <laughs> and say we did it from the beginning, right. from day one. I'll trust you. So do I have that same trust with you? Yes. I like to call it my dumbass girl alliance. It's just going to be me and you. All right. I told them exactly the same thing, and I believe they're just gullible enough to believe it. Wow, that's a lot to unpack here. The mix sucking thing was just a secret scene, but the rest of that, that was not a secret scene. They wanted you to know that, front and center. Russell is assuming that Marisa, Ashley, and Natalie are all dumb when he just met them. Why? Because they're females and they're young and pretty. That's about it. What else does he really know about them? And he is saying the exact same thing to multiple people, expecting them to never communicate with each other, which is quite risky. Betsy, the oldest lady on the tribe, immediately sees through his crap and says, I don't trust Russell. He approached me way too fast and it felt superficial. That night, in a secret scene, Russell is cuddling up on Ashley and Natalie in a very close way that doesn't seem like it's just for comfort, uh, according to Liz and Mick. And he even says, yeah, I know my wife will be mad at me for this, but uh, I'm doing it anyways. But then comes an even more villainous series of events than what happened earlier when... Right now, I think I am running the whole show. 
and they don't even know it, but I know I am. I lived in New Orleans, right in St. Bernard Parish, right by the levee. The storm was a Category 5. When it hit, it broke the levee. I tried to get out the house, and I realized I wasn't going to make it. So I grabbed my axe, because as a fireman, you, one thing you learn is when you go in something, you have to be able to get out. By the time I got upstairs, and it, the water was rushing in like, oh my I look at, at Rocky, you know, I couldn't even see him. It was a muddy water, and he's gone. I can't even oh find him. Oh my God. I never lived in New Orleans, and I'm not a fireman. I didn't even never had a German Shepherd. <laughs> and it's crazy how you can break their hearts by telling them a lie. Russell is an interesting character because I really trusted him off the start. He was trying to get people sympathy about Katrina, which is probably very true, and his dog. And I don't want to diminish that story, but I just think that it was he was angling at stuff, and I'm starting to feel like he's pretty slimy. I figured I'd make it a little interesting for everybody when they wake up. I emptied all the water out of all the canteens. I plan on making it as miserable as possible for everybody. I think if I can control how they feel, I can control how they think. I'm really a multi-millionaire on an oil company in Houston. I'm not here for the money. I'm only here to show people how easy it is to win this game. I should be the first one to go but I'm gonna do everything it takes to win this game. Marisa sees through his story. Good for her. As it didn't come up naturally in a conversation, it probably felt planned out. But what I find more egregious is dumping everyone's water in burning socks. Doesn't Russell want to win immunity challenges? To sabotage your own tribe is how you give yourself more opportunities to be voted out of this game. And then what about the merge? You won't have numbers going into it. If people on your own tribe are suffering this much, you're only setting yourself up for failure. Just an awful move all around. And yet, Russell is so entertaining. He's electric. He has this charisma that just makes for fun TV. I won't deny it. It's just not great strategically so far. When people start fighting with each other, Russell's like, yes. My strategy is going exactly to plan. And we then see in a secret scene him sneaking papaya by himself. And he says, if someone else finds this stash, I will vote them out. And funnily enough, we do see others finding papaya together. And I think that is the main difference we have seen so far between Russell and the rest of his tribe. They seemingly are all hanging out and he's kind of just doing his own thing. Not so shockingly, Foa Foa loses the immunity challenge. Oh no, who would have guessed? And back at camp, he talks with Marisa. You still gotta stay tight with me. But you've been like talking to everybody. I know. So I don't know why you've been doing that. And it makes me a little wary. If I'm talking individually, it don't, doesn't mean I'm trying to be strategizing with them. I'd rather keep it pretty low key. What, I mean, what have you been talking about? It's everything. We're out here on Survivor. How do you come to me and threaten me and telling me you you feeling uncomfortable. Are you kidding me? Marissa is the dumbest player I've ever seen. I'm running this show here. You come up to me and threaten me, you gotta go. And she's gone. I'm gonna tell you who's oh, going first. Okay, who? Marissa, if you stay with me, then you're gonna be fine for a long time. She just completely threatened me, saying, I, I'm, you're not making me comfortable. That makes me think, I gotta get rid of her. My tribe will believe anything I tell them uh, at any point because they're just stupid. Makes the leader of the tribe, but I'm the one in charge of the camp. She could call me the puppet master. They can be my little puppets. They'll run when I tell them to run. They'll walk when I tell them to walk. When I'm finished with them, just throw them in the trash. I mean, Russell completely fumbled the ball on that. He overreacted instead of working through the problem with his supposed alliance mate. He got defensive and he just overreacted. However, what is important, and this will be happening all season whether I tell you or not, the show is painting him as the correct one, so take that as you will. Betsy then talks to Natalie and says, I would watch out for Russell. He doesn't seem trustworthy. And at Tribal Council, Russell tells Jeff Probst that Marisa attacked him. A bit dramatic, don't you think? She says she was just talking to her alliance mate. And yeah, Russell is jumping to conclusions. So they all go to vote and... I'm the one that got the ball rolling to get you out of here. If you play with fire, you'll get burned. I'm voting for Marissa, and I really, really hate this. Um, and it was for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, um, it was the majority. And also, I did tell Mike today I would not vote for him, which again, but you um, and the majority. But I think you're an awesome competitor, and uh, I think this will probably uh, hurt our team. So. I'm sorry. First person voted out of Survivor Samoa. 
Marisa. Marisa, the child has spoken. I made some mistakes, you know. I trusted Russell initially, and then he went around and skewed my words and came back to me, and I, he told me honesty, honesty was the most important thing, and I think that'll bite him in the end. Ben and Russell created such a commotion around me that didn't exist that they actually tricked the other people into believing it. Um, if they would have followed their hearts, they would have known that I was the good guy and those were the bad guys, but it was a bad mistake and they had to pay for it. Yeah, if I were in Marisa's shoes, I would feel the same way, especially since he made an alliance with her on day one. And heads up, I'm going to be showing more of these post-game interviews that are relevant to Russell to help flesh out his story and understand everything. But wow, after only one episode, we have one of the most main characters of all time in our hands. Russell is so much fun to watch, but he's so destructive. His balls to the wall attitude is so incredibly entertaining to watch, but uh, I wonder if he's going to turn this thing around and make some more smart moves. By the way, if you want to pick what I cover for videos and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining my Once Upon an Island Patreon. You can cancel at any time, and there is a 15% discount if you do sign up for one year. Thank you for your support. Episode 2 begins and Russell says he had fun at Tribal Council and he is the sole reason Marisa is gone. As if no one else voted with him, I guess. And from now on, he says, if any woman has a strong mind in his tribe, she'll be gone next. His words, not mine, by the way. Speaking of women who have strong minds, we see Russell talk to Betsy and... I didn't do anything for you not to trust me. Nothing. You was going by appearance only, I guess. I got lunch with the dumb short hair blonde, even dumber long hair blonde, and the dark haired girl. You I done? Know. Why didn't you trust me from the beginning? You're not a threat to me. It would be a perfect thing for me to do. I feel fine that I voted for Ashley last night. I have no regrets, but I think Russ felt very threatened by Marisa. He didn't like her. She spoke her mind, but I'm not afraid to stand up to him at all. He knows where I'm coming from. He knows that I have no faith in him, and I used to, but not after getting to know him. I mean, this lady has him snuffed out. I mean, not literally. He hasn't been voted out of the game, but she has him all figured out. So based on what Russell just said and what we just saw, I'm guessing she's going to be gone next. Jason then talks to Russell, and as it turns out, they're kind of on the same page strategically. And he says, this guy is the perfect person to align with. And he tells Jason, hey, I trust you. But then Russell has an idea. What if he looked for the idol without any clues? Since there isn't any exile island this season, it's very likely the idols are hidden here at their camps. So if I could find that idol, then that would be genius. In, in history of Survivor, how many people found the idol without a clue? Zero. What's he doing in there? I'm looking. Right there. I'm looking for the immunity idol. Man, these people are so ignorant. Everybody's standing in the same spot. I'm in a big old hole in the tree. I don't want to look suspicious, but it surely does. I seen it sitting there. So I reached up there, yanked it down, got it loose, put it in my underwear, turned around, just walked off. The wonderful immunity idol. Booyah. I have the immunity idol without any letters or anything. I just used my brilliant brain to figure out where it was. I'm running this whole show right now. I'm the boss. What a massive move. And the fact that everyone watched him doing it without knowing just makes it funny. Not since Gary Hogaboom, AKA Gary Hawkins in season 11, has someone found an idol without a clue. It's easy to forget the humble landscaper though, who definitely wasn't an NFL quarterback. Russell then tells Jason about his idol to solidify trust between them and it works. At the immunity challenge, Ben goes rogue and kicks Swan in the back of the shin and is ejected from the game. Ben's on foe foe, obviously, and uh, he's completely unapologetic about what he did. Yeah, and they lose immunity. Great. What's even worse is that Mike Barassi of their tribe is medically evacuated. So uh, yeah, they still got to vote someone out. They're going to be down 10 to 7, just like that. Since Glue won, they get to send a player of their own to spy on foe foe. And with that, Yasmin comes to their tribe and says, yeah, you all suck. I don't know how you feeling about me, but let's just say I'm not the enemy. Not only that, I'm here to help you guys strategize because to me, I don't like a not fair fight. It's almost like why be matched up with people that's not matched up with the right people? Because then it's like taking candy from a baby. Who the hell wants to do that? That don't boost my self-esteem. You know what I'm saying? That make me seem like I really did something that was a cakewalk. She's full of crap. She comes over here to her camp, disrespects us, calls us babies, tells us how we can win a challenge if we listen to her. She come to the wrong camp. 
promise you ain't getting nothing but disrespect from me from now on. And you know what? She's going to pay for that statement. I promise you. This isn't a Yasmin video, but to say I don't understand her strategy here is an understatement. But Ben immediately fights with her while throwing around some phrases that, frankly, sound a bit racist. And based on the way Ben acts this whole season, yeah, I think they are. But Russell loves this fighting between them. Betsy sees Ben as this plague on their tribe and says, we need to vote him out. But Russell says, no, I like Ben. Ben needs to stay and Betsy needs to go. She, you know what? She, she better stop that. Betsy's going home tonight because first of all, she's the weakest link. And second of all, she doesn't trust me. Marissa threatened me. Betsy threatened me. I'm gonna go down the line. Each time somebody threatens me, they going home. Ashley, she'll be going home next. I want to keep Ben th this time. And you know what? Ben's going to stay this time because whatever I want happens. I said it before and I'll say it again. Russell is so full of himself and yet he's so wildly entertaining. It reminds me a bit of Boston Rob and Marquesas, you know, kind of just going for it. Except Boston Rob waited till episode three to get this puffed up and thinking he was running the show. Uh, Russell is just like this right out the gate. At Tribal Council, Russell says, I don't turn the other cheek, I kick the other person out. And then he high fives Ben. Jeff then pries into why Ben kicks Swan in the back of the shin and why he's making remarks about Yasmin. And Ben says, I don't regret anything. I don't play by survivor sissy rules. I mean, he says this right to Jeff's face. So they all go to vote and. You should have took my invitation while you could, but you didn't. That's why you're going home tonight. Bye bye. Betsy, I'm voting for you. No hard feelings. Uh, it was the majority. Second person voted out of Survivor Samoa. Betsy. Betsy. Trump has spoken. Well, Russell got his wish. Betsy is gone. Is he happy now? Is he? Back at camp, Jason cannot believe Ben called Yasmin ghetto trash and says Ben has to go. He's a mental plague to their tribe. Ben even says, without me around, this tribe wouldn't know what to do and they would likely die. I mean, that's a bit extreme, Ben. They, the show's gone on, what, 18 seasons? And no one's died without you around. How can this tribe possibly contain the egos of Ben and Russell? That's my real question, and I have no idea what the answer is. Speaking of Russell's ego, he talks to Natalie, the one he called the dumber long hair blonde, and... Natalie, how you feel? I feel good. How you feel about last night? Oh, it's always brutal, but it was the, I mean, it was the majority, it was the plan, so. Do you, do you have any in, in mind who you would want to? Gosh. Nobody here is playing the game. Nobody is playing the game but me on my tribe. Not one person, and it is crazy. Let's, I think we should definitely see how today goes before we start discussing this. Well, we today's to just a reward, I hope. I don't, this might be the worst group in history, and I might be the best. I'm gonna have them all under control like zombies walking around. Mm. The lengths this show goes to just to make Russell someone you should be rooting for is wild. Natalie is playing cool, calm, and just not putting a target on her back. I mean, she's seen how these other women are just being eliminated left and right, and this makes Russell smart and her dumb somehow. Just crazy. I think the show's trying to promote Russell's gameplay. They want more people to be like this. They want this to excite the audience. And with Jeff Probst having just taken over executive producer roles on the show, yeah, I could see how that would be. We kind of got hints of it in season 18, but here it's full on. Russell then says he likes how crazy Ben is being. He keeps the target on him and not on Russ. He then talks to Ben and says, hey, Ashley wants you gone. So uh, she needs to go, right? Like she wants you gone, Ben. And what Russell's actually doing here is instigating fights and it works. Ben and Ashley have a public spat right after. He's just planting seeds in their minds. I'm telling you, you plant that little seed in their head, in their little brain, and then it grows, and it's called a Russell seed. It takes over their whole mind. So that makes it easy for me to manipulate every single one of them. When people fight, I love that. How can they not even think it was me? You know, these people are just idiots. It is shocking that these people trust me so much. I mean, they really do. Everybody here trusts me. It's simple. I was born for this. This is what God made me for. Did Russell invent this technique? 
No, others have done this well before him, but his way of explaining it basically sounds like he did invent it and his charisma makes it stick in your mind like a Russell seed. I will say it's almost like Russell has really good marketing skills. I mean, that's really what it feels like because he's just doing things people have already done before. He's just marketing it a lot better. But Lafoa loses immunity again, and this time Shambo is sent to the tribe to hang out, and she is so much nicer than Yasmin. In fact, she says she hates her Galoo tribe mates. Well, that's just good news to them. One girl named Laura is even doing yoga, apparently. Like, who has time for that? The audacity of Laura to do yoga on Galoo. Jason then says, we got two options. We either vote Ben out tonight or I'm quitting. Russell then says, Jason is breaking down mentally and physically, and I wonder if Jason still had his socks. Would that help? Russell then shows Mick his idol to make him trust him and just like with Jason, it works. Usually this move is incredibly risky telling someone else about your idol and not advised, but he has been smart with his timing of doing it and who he's been telling. So yeah, it's worked out so far. At Tribal Council, Ben and Jason come to a head as Ben is not at all apologetic for his racist remarks and in fact doubles down on them. So everyone goes to vote and... I didn't want to have to do this, man. I have no choice now. See you in Hollywood. I am voting for Ben because this is what my alliance wants. Third person voted out of Survivor Samoa. Ben. Ben, Travis spoken. Time for you to go. I think the tribe's a bunch of sissies. Um, everybody except Russell. Ben basically only liking Russell post game says a lot about him. But Foa Foa is now down six to ten, and what the heck are they gonna do? It's been three episodes. See how dumb it is to sabotage your tribe on night one. Yeah, momentum is so clearly in Galoo's favor, it's not even funny. They then have a reward challenge that Russell blows. Thanks for that, and they don't get the chickens. Back at camp, he decides I'm over Jason being my number one. I would rather have Natalie by my side. My true alliance it changes all the time. I told Jason I bring him to the top two, but I don't know that I can count on Jason to stay in the game. I need somebody to be able to help me to the final two. So I would have to take somebody like Natalie with me because she's gonna ride my coattails the whole way. She's too stupid to do it by herself. She needs me. So I could stand up there and say, she followed my coattails this whole way. She rode me like a horse. Russell and I have talked about since the first day about being the final two at the end. So at this point, I'm kind of his wingman, I guess you could say. I definitely think people underestimate me. And I want them to think that, hey, it's really smart for them to take me to the end because they can beat me. You know, use that to my advantage. And if it comes down to me or him, I know I could beat Russell in the very end. Because I would say a lot of other people in the tribe have really been rubbed the wrong way by him. So I'm just trying to not ruffle feathers, steer clear, build good relationships, which is what I'm good at. It's a good thing no one has ever lost to someone by misreading the jury and underestimating their competition. Anyways, Fofo wins immunity, finally. And in episode five, we learn that there is a gross food eating challenge coming up. And Liz casually talks to Russell and says, you know, I'm a little bit worried that Ashley may not be good at it since she struggles to even eat coconuts. That's all Liz says. But that's not how Russell hears this. He retells this to Mick and Jason as Liz trying to be strategic and says she needs to shut up and stop planting seeds in other people's heads. So she's doing what you're doing, Russell? Anyways, we go to the reward challenge and guess who blows it? Ashley. Yeah. Well, I guess Liz was right. It's kind of poetic that Russell was wrong. He'll never admit it, but it's poetic. Shambo is once again sent to Foa Foa and gets a few clues as to where the idol is and she just kind of shares it with everyone. As we already know, the idol was in the tree and everyone goes and looks there and they're like, oh, well, I guess Ben found it, but Liz knows better. The Muti idol was never played, even if Ben had it. I mean, I know somebody has it and I have a feeling if it wasn't Ben, it's Russell and I have a feeling it's probably Russell. You've yeah. been in that tree. Yeah, I've been in that tree a lot, but not all the way up in it. Where you don't have it? to go all the way up in it. She didn't stand up in it. I'm telling you, you are lying to me. Be you're honest. freaking me out right now because I'm telling you the truth and you tell me I'm not honest. Well, and you want to be the one to go next? Liz, she gets it. She knows what's going on. But why in the world would you threaten me? That's like slapping me in the face. You don't think I'm going to get back at you? But Girl, you, you, you're ben, walking on that thin ice. I'm going to tell you that right now. Let me tell you, you're walking on thin ice. And whoever I want to be gone is going to be gone. I got it all under my thumb right now. As I said before, it's all marketing. He only gets what he wants when no one else really cares. He had no say in that Ben vote. Jason did. Foa Foa loses immunity again. So at Tribal Council. You're lazy. 
You can't think for yourself. You can't do for yourself. And that's why you gotta go home. And it's because of me you're going home. I'm out here playing for one million dollars. Never trust me. Ashley, I'm voting for you because uh, this is what my core alliance went with, but um, this is the hardest vote I think I'll make in the entire game. I'm sorry. Love you, girl. You are awesome. Fifth person voted out of Survivor Samoa. Ashley. Ashley, the tribe has spoken. By the way, I really want you to pay attention to the way Russell talks about people behind their back and contrast it with what Natalie's saying, because those things people feel, they sense when you don't really like them, you know? And Russell isn't some expert liar. I mean, he's good, but he's just a man. People can sense this stuff, especially when you're like that harsh about it. So this next moment I'm about to show you is super important, but for some reason it's buried in the recap episode, even though chronologically it takes place during episode six. So. I'm gonna show it to you, but it is it is super important, so I don't know why they tried hiding this. That's how stupid these people really are. They think that I'm some redneck from the South that can't do anything. Well, you know what? I'm the richest man here. So what do you do now? I own an old company in Houston. It's called a tanker in service. Last year I made 1.7 million. <laughs> really? I mean, if, if I would have thought that Nick would say anything about what I do for a living, then I wouldn't have told him. I'm playing all these people like fools. There is a difference between book smarts and common sense smarts. It seems like none of my group has any common sense, not a one of them. Mick is the first person he has told this to, and Russell just loves to brag, thinking there will be no consequences for his actions. Did I mention it's been raining? A lot. Seemingly an endless supply of it, and it's taking a toll on both tribes, Except Russell, at least that's what he says. He says, if it takes seven days and seven nights of rain for someone to quit, then that would be worth it. However, he then motivates Jason to keep pushing and stay in the game, which kind of just goes against what he just said. Russell says, you know what, this rain isn't going to stop. And the very next scene we see is a rainbow. So, at the reward challenge. Left, 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 left. Hold on. Uh, no no idea where he's at right okay. now. He's down, he's down. Up. The ball is right. We have to go down towards Whoa. Russell, are you with me? I'm good. He, he was out. He yeah, was sure. definitely out. Down. I'm good. Let's go. Let's go. I'm cool. Man, there's a little wind different pushing the bar, but I'm good. Russ, are you okay? Yeah. Russ? Russ? Russ, are you with us? Hold on. Russ? Russell. Russ, talk to me. Russ, talk to me. Russell, Russell, wake up, mate. Wake up. There? Huh? Yeah. Mm hmm. Do you remember what just happened? Huh? His heart rate was 97 when we sat him up, and now it's 68. Okay. And it dropped. It dropped like really that. suddenly. Don't feel comfortable getting him in. Not with his heart doing what it's doing. That was incredibly scary, and now the balance of Russell swings to the side of Hans. As we move into episode 7, where Foa Foa loses reward, and Laura is sent to their camp. Unlike with Yasmin or Shambo, we see Russell make a concentrated effort to align with her. Yeah, I figured so Sham would, would send me. Oh, really? I, yeah, I figured she would. There's definitely an undercurrent why Sham sent me over to the Foa Foa tribe. I mean, I mean, clearly she doesn't like me. Okay, so you have twins. Mm-hmm. I have twin girls. It's not on. My dad's a preacher. Please? I'm a theology student. Really? Mm -hmm. I got my degree in women's ministries. I swear to you, you can trust me. What are we going to do? Go to the final two, the two of us? Final together? two. Russell came to me and was conspiring to have this secret alliance that clearly nobody would ever suspect. And, you know, that's another card that I stick in my pocket that I might want to play. I mean, you know, it's just food for thought. You know, when it comes down to it, I hope it's final three. Because you know what I hope? I, I would hope it would be me, you, and Natalie in the final three. Well, I was happy when they decided to send Laura to our camp. Because it doesn't look like we're going to go with numbers and to emerge. So what I have to do now is work my Houdini magic on Laura. I can spot a good Christian any time. It's easy. There's no immunity idol here. Did she find it? Ben found it and didn't play it. He is such a liar. Russell has not shown any characteristics of being a Christian, so it's all just a ploy to appeal to Laura, who seems to take what Russell's told her with a grain of salt, 
though she doesn't deny the option of working with him. However, I have to ask, what is his thought process here when offering her this deal? They just met. It isn't day one where they're on the same tribe. They're on opposing tribes. They're almost halfway through the game. This is like a day one tactic when no one's aligned with anyone. It's kind of the wrong place, wrong time, in my opinion. We then see Laura and Natalie have a legitimate connection over being Christians that Russell couldn't fake if he wanted to. However, he does like that she is doing this since Natalie's getting in good with the enemy as he sees it. And we have learned over on the glue tribe that Laura's kind of in charge of all the women over there. And Liz hates this. We have a good group of our pastor and his wife and a bunch of the other friends have them. We're not like these really bad as long as we have a flame, we're right our Harley's down to Starbucks and get a coffee. I didn't get to finish. So it was like a inspirational. It was a fairly small book. I had little chapters um, about being positive and you know uplifting. And I was just like, yeah, but this is like a crisis. And they're talking about their faith in books. Also, I understand we have a guest, but they're talking about book of the month clubs. Yeah. Damn. Liz is so stupid. I don't even see how she can walk without falling down. This is ridiculous. If we merge, we need somebody on the inside. And Natalie's doing a good job talking to Laura around the camp. So I have to keep Natalie for my little toy. You know, she has to be there for me so I can manipulate her little mind and do what I want her to do. When it comes to this game, you better be street smart. And Liz has a mouth on her, and I don't think she knows when to shut up. So uh, I'm going to keep my eye on her. Foa Foa loses immunity, and everyone sees just how much worse Jason has gotten since day one when he crushed the swimming challenge. This dude is out of it, and he seems to just be chilling and waiting for his time to end. Russell says these people are going to lose me the game. These idiots are probably going to cost me a million dollars. And I plan on having a lot of fun with the money. A lot of fun. Maybe we need to get rid of Jason because he gave up out there. He's just standing there looking at the puzzle like it's gonna move itself. We gotta mix something up. So what happens, happens. You're the weakest link when it comes to trust. That's why I gotta get rid of you. If the merge happens, I know you'll flip flop. Liz, I'm voting for you because this was uh, what the group decided. Six person voted out of Survivor Samoa. Liz, Liz, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. I did fail to mention right before that vote that Russell says there's no way Galoo's going to outwit him. I guess the merge is coming soon because in episode 8, it's all anyone can talk about. Russell tells Mick, Jason, and Allie, we have to stick together against Galoo or we're all done for. I'm not really nervous about my numbers. I'm too good for this game. I'm, I'm too sly. And now I gotta make sure my seed is planted in all these dumbasses' heads. So once we do merge, we can stir them up over there. Congratulations, Fofo and Galoo. You are now on track. We are now merged, but Foa Foa is down 8-4, to four, and it's a big lead. I am unsure how Foa Foa will be able to chip into it. Maybe if Russell plays his idol at this tribal and no one knows about it besides, of course, Foa Foa, then they could actually get someone out and possibly flip Shambo. I mean, they still wouldn't have the numbers, but it's something. It's definitely something. Everyone enjoys the feast, and Russell states that Galoo doesn't know what's about to hit them, and that's when Monica feeds him. Welcome to the merge feast. <laughs> I can already see that I'm a ruler in this kingdom. I mean, come on. Who gets grapes fed to them? The kings do. Is this Russell's turn as a character? Think about it. So far, he's been a bully and a jerk any chance he gets, but that was when he was in charge. Now we have Russell Hansen Company against the Goliath Galoo tribe of eight. All of a sudden, this perspective shift makes him the underdog. Now he seems like a good guy. I say this, and then in a secret scene, we see him free one of the chickens that Galoo has caught, and... It's time for me to create the chaos. I'm in a bind right now, so I have to get everybody else at each other's throat. I decided to open the hatch so the chickens could get out. Bird go free. <laughs> you know, I want to have a little bit of fun tonight. So uh, I get up and I put the idol around my neck. I start looking at everybody, sleeping. All of a sudden I see Dave's up. I say, oh, this is great. You get up this early all the time. You know what? Is I, uh, I teach boot camp, so I'm up about 4 a.m. I thought it was funny that Dave was sitting there talking to me and the idol sitting right there. All he's got to do is look at it, but he never did. None of them are thinking really the game. They think it really get rid of Foa Foa. They think they have numbers. They think that uh, they're just going to weed us out one at a time. 
It's not gonna happen. Kinda creepy, don't you think? Who walks around staring at people with their idol around their neck? I guess that's why it was cut from the show. They want you to root for Russell and not think he's this evil villain. At least not for now. We then see Natalie and Laura reconnect and apparently their friendship is growing, but what about Russell's deal with Laura? You know what this is? If you could take me to the top seven, I'll hand it to you. I swear I will. I can't believe Russell showed me he had the idol. But you know what? Desperate people do desperate things. I don't believe he would give that to me, but just knowing that he has it is huge, which means when we do get rid of him, it's going to have to be a big blindside. Who do you want the first one to go? One of my guys? It'll be one of your guys or Shambo. Right. It's kind of funny. Russell came to me with this attitude of like, I'm the boss and here's some rules, he tells me. And I'm like, okay, well, just so you know, I kind of hold all the cards right now and um, you just need to try and stay alive. You're in a worse position than myself at this point. You're coming here with 10%, I got 90. All right. Laura's digging her own grave. She told me, I'm 90% in charge of this, Russell. You're about 10% right now. In other words, sit down and listen. <laughs> no, it don't work like that for me. Okay. She might be the first to go. Ah, uh, what? What is he doing? What? Why? He's going about this completely the wrong way and maybe sabotaging anything good Natalie is building with her. Foe Fo needs numbers badly and Russell knows this, so this is why he goes and talks to Monica and shows her the idol too. And that doesn't work. So he does the same with John, who takes this by the way as a way to stroke his own ego, but it still doesn't work for Russell in terms of getting them numbers. He's just showing everyone his idol. Why is he freely telling the opposition about his most powerful object? I don't know. When he told Jason to make it made sense here, it just, it's just kind of like nonsense. But then he talks to Shambo and Shambo's a really good person and we do connect. I think it has a lot to do with my Southern background. People trust this out. So she could be one of my numbers. I mean, I could use her for that. You ain't worried about Lori doing some kind of sneaky move on you? Of course I am. Knowing what a little spiteful snake she is. She's half the battle. Shambo hates Lore. She hates her. So I know at any point she'll vote Laura's name. I trust Russell implicitly. The guy is definitely cut from the same cloth as me. He's a country boy, I'm a country girl. And he just keeps bringing up that Laura needs to go first. She's the bane of my existence in Samoa. So it's not like we need this multi-layered plot. Write Laura's name down tonight, it's that simple. You ever heard of a man named Babe Ruth? He struck out more than anybody ever. But you know what? He also hit the most home runs. So that tells me one thing. Keep swinging, baby. <laughs> Eventually, you're going to hit one. <laughs> okay, this could work. A Shambo flip only gives them five. But if he plays it out correctly, five is all they would need. But this plan quickly goes to crap. When Laura wins immunity and back at camp, Shambo says, Laura is the only glue member I was willing to flip on. Fofo has to go tonight. Russell says, what about Monica? She's like Laura's right hand lady. And Shambo says, no, no, it has to be Fofo tonight. We then see Laura tell all of Galoo who don't already know that Russell has an idol and basically things can't get much worse. We're kind of in a, in a hole right now and it's largely due to Russell. But then Eric talks to Mick, Jason and Natalie and says, hey, vote the way I tell you and don't tell Russell what you're doing. We want him to waste his idol. Jason says, screw that. Let's throw Eric under the bus to Galoo. Great idea, which Natalie then executes flawlessly by utilizing the relationship she has with Laura, who's basically the leader of the Galoo women. Natalie's a little excited that she pulled this off and tells Russell, says, no way, you didn't make any strategic move. You only think you did. He underestimates her so much. At Tribal Council, Eric talks down about Foa Foa and makes it sound like they have no chance. This game is over for them. Russell says, don't count us out yet. We still have hope. So when they all vote don't think i know what don't think i don't know what y'all doing this is the best blind side that never happened eric i'm voting for you and i really hope that uh, everybody does what they say they're gonna do sorry e but your own paranoia was your demise the minute that you decided to go against Galu and turn against the girls you had to go If I know the heaven, I might as well play it. This is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Russell tonight will not count. First vote, Jason. Jason. Two votes, Jason. Eric. Eric. Two votes, Jason. Two votes, Eric. Eric. That's three votes, Eric. 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 That's five votes, Eric. Eric. 
Six votes, error. Seventh person voted out of Survivor Samoa and the first member of our jury. Error. Eric, Trump has spoken. What do you know, Natalie did flip the glue members and Russell wasted his idol. However, they're still down 4-7 to seven and he's worried he's next to go. He needs a miracle to take place to save his game, which is made even more apparent when Laura says Russell is their next target. So when his team loses the reward challenge, he knows the winning team is likely getting an idol clue. So he says, screw that. I'm just going to look for it while they're gone without a clue. I don't care about no damn reward. I'm here to win the game. I'm going to find the next immunity idol and I ain't going to tell a damn so. You know, I thought maybe it might be around tree mail. Uh, it might be around the, the water, or it might be around the bridge. It has to be near something, uh, a landmark, something. That easy. I think I just found the second hidden immunity outer without a clue. <laughs> this might be worth one million dollars. I found the immunity outer without anybody telling me anything. That's just uh, the gift that I have. This was why I was born. I missed fried chicken and brownies for the second hidden immunity idol. Sounds like a good exchange to me. This is massive. That's likely the only idol anyone has since we learned earlier that Eric went home with the Galoo idol in his pocket, though Russell doesn't know this. And he tells Shambo about his idol, who is so excited because he says we can get out Laura, AKA Medusa. Shambo says, I now trust Russell impeccably, but unfortunately Laura wins immunity again. Great. She then says, Russell has been lying to all of us. AKA, I am sure all of Galoo has passed around the deals he has tried making with each and every one of them and all the lies he said so far as well. So he's definitely the target tonight. Russell then tells Fofo that Kelly's gone tonight and then he tells them about his idol and they're just blown away with Jason proclaiming that he's beginning to love Russell. As I said before, this underdog position is doing wonders to make Russell rootable. So we go to tribal council and... You just got caught up at the wrong place in the wrong time. Kelly, I'm voting for you because this is like Bobo's last hope. He liked me from day one, and so it's hard to build a trust within the relationship from there. I ain't finished playing just yet. Keep hope alive. This is an idol. Any votes cast against Russell will not count. First vote. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell, that's three votes. Russell, none of them count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Kelly. Oh my god. Two votes, Kelly. You just what the hell is what he did. Eighth person voted out of Survivor Samoa and the second member of our jury. Kelly. Kelly, the tribe has spoken. You know, I think it was a cheap shot made uh, under the mind of Russell because he thought I was playing too nice and he was too manipulative. You know, he's just a little sneaky man and he's. You know, I, his character is horrible from things he's told me in the game, from things he does in real life. And I don't feel like I deserve to go home at all. You know, I feel like I was playing a game really well and I was playing genuine. And it's just a shame that like a sneaky little rat like Russell would feel the need to like get rid of the genuine player. First off, that was an impeccably played idol. It sets the record for the most votes negated by one idol to this point in Survivor history. But uh, something was clearly not shown to us, not even in secret scenes. We never saw him interact with Kelly, and yet she has a lot of mean things to say about him. So what didn't we witness? On the plus side, if Shambo flips, then they would be tied 5-5 five five with the remaining glue. Things are heating up, and that's when Russell compares himself to... My work is done. It's like a painting, like a Picasso. You know, he's, he's a great artist. This is my artwork. This might be one of my best pieces of work I've ever done. That's going to be a pretty expensive sale. They write me a check for a million dollars for this work. So, so I can take that, take that to the bank. He is so cocky, but he did earn it after that amazing idol play. Shambo is in stitches after seeing how mad Laura got by the blind side and straight up says, if I find an idol, I'm gifting it to Russell so he can make Laura's head explode again. Brilliant. On top of that, Russell is now looking for his third idol, but no luck so far. 
But what's baffling to me, though I guess it shouldn't be at this point, is how he thinks he has this game in the bag, as we see in the secret scene with Natalie. It feels really good to be aligned with Russell. I mean, he is uh, the most powerful player in this game. He knows that whatever he votes, I vote too. So really, he's got two votes no matter what, any way he wants to, to play it. When it comes down to brass knuckles, and it's just me and you and somebody else, you have to swear to me. You ain't gonna think that I'm gonna beat you because I played the game better and vote me out. Swear on Nick. You're gonna start thinking that's a lot of money. Your brain's gonna start working. Who better to take? There's no way she can beat me in votes. She followed and did everything I told her to do. She wouldn't even know how to talk. She might even say, oh, he's right. Give it all to him. You know, she's so sweet. I love it. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing no one has ever lost to someone else by misreading the jury and underestimating the competition. At the reward challenge, Russell's team wins. And on said reward, we see them use the amazing, wonderful Sprint phone that I need to go get right now. Thank you, Survivor, for promoting it. But on the serious side, it seems like Natalie and Dave are taking a lot of pictures together. More importantly, they get a clue to another idol at camp, and upon their return... We totally underestimated Russell's capability of finding the idol. What we need to do is keep that hidden immunity idol out of Russell's hands. Looking for the same thing I'm looking for, Jason? I don't know. What are you looking for? <laughs> You're the one that's lifting up rock. I know that it has to be where that wall is in camp. They have a rock in a little hoe, square hoe. Looks like the rock in the picture to me. There it is. Oh my God. And my butt's probably in the sling more than ever, but not if they think I have an idol. I'm gonna be A-OK. -okay. <laughs> that is three idols for Russell. The only other idol we have seen this season went home with Eric. How can this day get better? Well, it can because Laura loses immunity and Mick wins, which means Shambo is a lock to vote with them. All they need to do is flip one more person if they don't wanna do a rock draw, but at worst, they're drawing rocks right now. Laura then talks with Dave and John and says, let's wait until the last minute to make a decision on who to vote out tonight, and by that I mean let's vote out Russell. John says, no way, let's target Natalie. She is 100% not going to have an idol played for her. But then things heat up in this secret scene where Russell and Laura talk strategy. Can I ask one thing, a favor from me? One thing. What? I don't wanna be the one that gets blindsided. If you tell me, I'll just go. You could tell me right before, you could tell me 10 minutes before, or a minute before. I want to see Russell go home tonight. The tough part for me in this game is that balance of of lying to somebody. No, I don't, I don't want to lie to somebody. But can you manipulate them enough to where you can avoid the lying? You know what? I don't know. I can't make you that promise um, because I also have allegiance to other people. But if it's okay with them, then I will totally give you a heads up. Well, you're the one on the tribe that lied to all of us. Right. That's the huge thing. They played the game the hardest. Everybody plays the game different. No, you're the. I played the game hard. I didn't lie to you. Did you lie to Eric? You think blindsiding is not lying? You I told, told him, him right up front. No, I didn't tell him he was going to go home. I never told him he was going to go home. He never asked me. I didn't come out here to just camp for 39 days. I came out here to win a million dollars. And I owe Russell nothing. Absolutely nothing. I owe Russell my vote to get him off the island is what I owe Russell. Oh, ho, ho, ho. things are coming to a head tonight. Neither person's going to flip, and we are likely getting a rock draw. The first time since season four. Monica then talks to Russell, who looks completely disinterested in what she has to say, and she says, let's vote off John. I mean, not a bad suggestion, but Russell knows Shamble will only flip for Laura, so she has to be voted off next, period. He suspects Monica's just blowing smoke up his butt so there won't be a tie, and uh, yeah, he's right. He then talks to John and says, hey, your tribe is telling me they're gonna vote you out, dude, but I'm not buying it. Laura's gone tonight. Russell isn't considering that one of these glue members could have the idol from their camp when saying all of this. However, he scares John. So at Tribal Council, they all vote and... Laura, you are a viperous poison. I pray to God you go tonight. The other day you told me that I may be faster than you, but you're smarter than me. You see, that's why you're going home tonight. You underestimated me. First vote, Laura. Natalie, one vote Laura, one vote Natalie. Natalie, two votes Natalie. Laura, two votes Laura. Laura, that's three votes Laura. <laughs> Natalie, that's four votes Laura. Natalie, 
Laura, Natalie, we have a tie. Here's how the tie's gonna work. Laura and Natalie, you will not vote. Everybody else will vote. You can only vote for Laura or Natalie. Unwavering in this decision. Okay, second round, let's see what happens. First vote, Laura. Two votes, Laura. Laura, that's three votes, Laura. Natalie. Natalie. Tied again. Laura, that's four votes, Laura. Three votes, Natalie. One vote left. Ninth person voted out and the third member of our jury. Laura. Laura, you try with Spogan. He's just sneaky. There's something about him. There's, there's, there's some evilness that you don't want to cross about him, but yet he doesn't care. You know, he doesn't care that he knows that he does it. Foa Foa now has the numbers. I mean, who would have thunk? Wow, Galoo has collapsed basically. And in regards to Laura, I think we all could have guessed she isn't a Russell fan. In no way would he ever get her vote if he reaches the end. Just like he wouldn't get Kelly's vote. He is actively making the jury dislike him. Episode 12 brings with it the Survivor Auction, a beloved part of the show for me. But despite Russell not winning anything, Two moments were interesting in regards to him. For example, when Jeff puts up a covered item and says, what's the likelihood this is bad? And Russell says, oh, extremely high. And then Monica wins it and it's actually really good. <laughs> kind of funny. The show has done this a few times this season so far. John also buys a pie and doesn't share it with anyone. And Russell says, that was dumb. And I agree. But now with Laura gone, the real question is, which glue member goes next? Well, Shambo had a dream that they voted off Dave. I said, that's a sign, Shambo. That's Assange. That's that God talking to you. <laughs> so she has her dreams, who she's voting off, and then that's who it has to be. You got somebody unstable like Shambo, all she votes with is her emotions. You make her mad at somebody, that's it. She'll vote for him. Oh my word. Once Dave's gone, we have the numbers, I'll run it all the way to the top. He is right, Shambolt runs almost exclusively on her emotions based on what we have seen, and logic is not as high of a priority. Jason then wins immunity, and John approaches Russell and says, hey, I know you have the idol. Which, as we all know by now, if you simply tell Russell something like that, you're the target. It's like you're threatening him and his family. Russell doesn't even need to say this for us to know it. However, I'll let you know that Russell, he says it. He also lies to John and says, I won't burn you. Russell then goes to Dave and says, let's vote off John. And we see Jason and Mick talking about the sudden change of plans. Jason smartly observes that by treating Shamba like this, by turning on her, because she's voting for Dave and leaving her out of the plan, we are no better than Galoo. We should just vote Dave. And Jason's right. So they all go to vote and you're a great st strategic player i could be the only strategic player left so that's why i have to let you go john i'm voting for you because you are a very strategic player and you're a huge threat to uh foa foa so good game tenth person voted out the fourth member of our jury john she has no idea what happened john travis spoken Russell may be the smartest survivor person here. It puts him in a better position that he has two smart, loyal, trustworthy people behind him in Mick and Jason. And then he has Natalie who seemingly loves him. So Russell is so powerful here. I think John sees a lot of himself in Russell and clearly values his type of game. After all, John's ego is massive, and in the Ponderosa videos, we see him being super arrogant. But I am wondering how Russell will make Shambo not feel burned by betraying her trust. When John came up to me, he was saying how pissed off he was at you. Okay. So he's trying to get rid of you. And I didn't want you to, to uh, break my word. Break your word to him. I couldn't have. I would have written Dave down anyway. So everything's still cool. I don't want you to worry. Oh, well, that was easy. Just lie to her. We then see a scene that is very telling about what Jason values in this game as he talks to Monica and CGI Brett. Yes, that is the first time I've said his name and says Russell is playing this reckless bulldog sort of game while he has stayed behind the scenes and been the brains. Jason referring to himself as the brains. Now, whether you agree with him or not, it's not really what's important here. What is important is that this is Jason's perspective and that's what he values in the game. But he also casually mentions that Russell is loaded, AKA stinking rich. I guess at some point Mick must have told 
hold him. But anyways, Jason wins immunity again. And Russell says, now Shambo's wish can come true. Dave is next. He then talks to Monica and funnily enough, she plants seeds of doubts in him. Hmm, interesting. She says the jury will vote for Shambo at the end of the game. She basically says you can't sit next to Shambo and win. While we know this is all bollocks, Russell actually agrees with Monica and says, this is true. Huh, interesting. He then talks to Dave and your best strategic move uh-huh. would be talking to me. Everybody's debating you and Shambo. Okay. So uh, I decide Shambo, I could get Natalie. Russell comes to me and says, if you, Brett and Monica vote Shambo, Shambo goes home. So Shambo tonight, huh? That's how I'm seeing it. Honestly, I got no problem with that at all. But why? You already know you're voting him out, so why make this deal? It's unnecessary. You don't have to burn him. Dave doesn't have the numbers and Russell doesn't suspect he has the glue idol, so why? It's so, so dumb to do to a future jury member. So they all go to vote and... Shambo, I'm voting for you because this is the name Russell gave me to keep my head off the block. I don't think it's gonna work, but it feels pretty good. You were running around threatening to get me out of the game. That was your biggest mistake in the game. Now I gotta get rid of you. Dave, I'm voting for you. Sorry, uh, you're hilarious, but uh, this was the majority, and uh, you are a strategic threat, so good game. 11th person voted out, the fifth member of our jury. Dave. Dave, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Dave is gone, so who is the next target? Monica? No. CGI bread, of course. Russell says this guy could sweep the jury. And uh, actually, Russell's not too far off. Galoo will pretty much be making up the whole jury at the rate we're going. And CGI Brett is a nice dude who hasn't annoyed anyone and has been humble, kind of like Natalie White. He could win. So it sucks when he wins his first immunity challenge. Yeah, guess he's not going tonight. Russell's like, well, Monica's gone. So we then see Mick talk to CGI Brett and Monica and says, yeah, Russell is a snake, sure but everyone knows this about him and we can kind of adapt to him being a snake to us all. Mick basically says that Russell's openly villainous. Monica then talks to Russell and... I think that you're keeping a lot of threats around. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I mean, you need to put people on your jury that are gonna vote for you. I'm surprised you wanna put me on the jury. I could make or break you on the jury, really. Jason told me you're a multi-millionaire already. I'm voting based on need. Who needs the money? Monica, she told me you said you're going to vote me out after I get rid of the idol. She told me what I do for a living. Oh, why would she tell me that? Because she's trying to stay in the game. Russell was so angry. I might have made a mistake and told her what he does for a living. I honestly don't remember. Monica, she had to run her little pie hole. The little bitch needs to be sent home tonight. Man, Monica has found Russell's weakness. His ego, of course. I'm sure everyone knows about his ego, but she's the only one so far who has poked it like this and got him all riled up. I also don't think she's a Russell fan and this isn't helping his case. But Russell is livid and he tells Shambo he loves being angry. So at Tribal Council, Russell exposes how much Monica has rattled him. Monica tells me, if you vote me out, I ain't putting your name down for the million dollars. And I'm going to talk to everybody else. They ain't putting your name down. Well, you know what? You're only making me vote you out now because because of what you said. You know, Russell came into the merge and basically tried to push a lot of buttons. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen Russell's buttons pushed. But today he was huffing and puffing all over camp. Did you say this about me? I mean, he was fuming, fuming. <laughs> Russell, little bit of teacher student. She got me pissed off. So if she would have played that hard this entire game, she would be the one in charge right now. Or I could be going home earlier. But I've been playing hard this entire game and I'm still here. Because of idols. Yeah, well, that's playing hard. All of that in front of the jury, in front of a jury who currently contains one Russell supporter, two Russell haters, and two people who I am currently unsure are voting for. Yeah, not a great look. And with that, I want to show you another thing Russell said pregame from the same interview that opened this video before showing you the vote. I think I'm smarter than the whole cast. I think I'm street smarter than the whole cast, and that's the whole thing. You have to be smart enough to know when to shut up, and you gotta be smart enough to know when to cause problems. People think, well, why would you wanna do such vindictive things? Well, you don't wanna do vindictive things in their face. That would be stupid. You do vindictive things, so behind the scenes, they're all at each other's throat. If you tell me that you're not gonna write my name down 
for the million dollars if I put you on the jury. That's just going to only make me want to vote you out even more. Stupid, stupid little girl. Bad strategy. Happy birthday. Monica, happy early birthday. But I'm voting for you because you created all kinds of drama today. That's off to you for trying. Uh, but yeah, we can't have that again. So sorry. Happy early birthday again. Twelfth person voted out and the sixth member of our jury. Monica. Monica, the trap is spoken. I believe Russell has completely forgotten to keep a hidden strategy because, yeah, he's not keeping it hidden anymore. He thought this would be a cakewalk. Episode 14 starts off with Russell saying CGI Brett needs to go before he then proceeds to make fun of Shambo's hair. We then go to the war challenge where Russell and Natalie are the team leaders and with Natalie's first pick, she chooses. CGI Brett. This is a pick that baffles Russell because he has not been witnessing these two becoming legit friends back at camp and how they have truly connected over their faith. His team wins a reward and on said reward, they all discuss what Natalie did. Honestly, why do you think Natalie picked Brett first today? I mean, that was an interesting choice. I'll tell you what I call it, very telling. Uh, I know, I know for a fact, Natalie's with me. But the thing is, I'm putting it in their head. Well, maybe something is going on with Mick, Natalie, and Brett. So we're gonna have to stop it immediately. We're gonna have to blindside everybody. Yeah. Everybody left. Peace. I mean, Russell's all riled up, and I don't think Jason and Shambo care nearly as much as he does. But speaking of those two, let's take a pause and evaluate who is in this game. Who could Russell beat at the end? So far, we have seen Natalie make friends with at least half of the jury so far, so I wouldn't even bother taking her. CGI Brett is in an even better position than Natalie, so no chance with him. Mick seems to be liked, but I think Russell's played a better game, and we haven't witnessed Mick making any deep connections with anyone outside of Jason. Shambo is hated by almost all of Galoo, so she is an easy person to beat at the end, despite what Monica said earlier. And Jason is in a similar position to Mick, except I think he might be a little less respected because everyone's seen how he's kind of checked out of the game. So basically, I think Russell's best bets at the end are between Shambo, Jason, and Mick. I think he could beat some combo of them. So when Russell talks to Natalie and says he wants to sit at the end with her and Jason, it makes me a bit concerned, but that's in the future. For now, CGI Brett needs to go. Everybody, every single person there, because you did that, they're like, oh, well, they might get together. Mick might be, Mick, no, but yeah. Mick might be, so we gotta get rid of Mick. Oh, Brad. Russell, from the very first day, he told me, I'll take you to the final two if I can trust you. And I was like, you can trust me. I've been completely honest with him, letting him know what's going on. And um, we've kind of been on the same page with everything. So we actually have quite a bit of power Two brains are better than one. If we can prevent Brett from winning immunity, then today will be a wonderful day. He's a little punk. He's 110 pounds. He's not faster than me. He's not stronger than me. It is done. They say don't get confident in this game. You know what? I'm confident as a hell. Brett wins immunity. Guaranteed a spot in the final five. Once again, Brett is safe at Tribal Council. Guaranteed a spot in the final five. Well, 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 CGI Brett wins immunity number two, so that ain't happening. Back at camp, Jason approaches Russell and says, Shambo is next. By the way, I love when Jason steps up and tells Russell what to do. That is now two times this season, and guess what? Both times, Jason's getting his way. Shambo catches the tail end of that conversation with Jason and says, hey Russell, what's going on? And Russell just lies and lies to her. No reason to lie, by the way. She has no power, no idol. But either way, it's kind of a win-lose situation no matter how you go about it. But then we see them talk in this secret scene. So if I was on a jury with Brett, yeah. who do you think would possibly vote for me? I know that Dave would vote for you and... Natalie would vote for me. Nat would vote for you. Mick would vote for me. Mick would vote for you. That's three. That's how many? Three. All right. Jason would vote for you. Yeah, but that's one of the, you know, that's one of the three. What do you mean? It can't be all of them. They ain't all gonna be on the jury. They most certainly are. How? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're saying you're taking one of them, not me. No, no, I see what you're saying. I wasn't thinking. Brett's gonna Maybe you be, were if, thinking. If Brett wasn't. Aha. Uh -huh. I said I made a mistake. It's all good, baby. I got you. Whatever. Don't be getting all huffy. 
You're the one getting huffy. What are you talking about? Oh, for the love of Christ, shut the hell up. I mean, how does she not know at this point? She has to know something is up. And in further prodding of Russell, he just keeps doubling down and says, Mick is gone, Shambo is safe. But maybe, just maybe, it is because Russell's debating on whether he really wants Mick gone or not, aka the smart move at this point, besides voting out Natalie. Shambo is in my nerves. Well, I tell you what, I don't even like her breath. I don't even know why she's still here. I know why she's still here, because we're using her stupid butt for, for votes. Now, I can uh, keep Shambo around, because she's going to not ever put my name down. She's horrible at the challenges, and she ain't gonna get any votes for the million dollars. That's three good reasons, extremely good reasons. The only good reason to keep Mick around, there's one. Keep athletes together to be able to beat Brett in the next immunity challenge. Yeah, at Tribal Council, he wears the necklace again, just to show off at this point, no other reason to do it. And when Jeff asks if he's going to play tonight, he says, I'm gonna keep it as a souvenir. So, when they all vote. I gotta get rid of you today. Thirteenth person voted out, the seventh member of our jury. Shambo. Shambo, the tribe has spoken. The finale kicks off with Russell telling Natalie that if CGI Brett wins the next immunity challenge, then she has to go. This is 1000% the right move, by the way, especially with Shambo gone. His best bet is now against Jason and Mick, but he needs to get prepped for this immunity challenge. Prepare his mind, use his Houdini magic. We have to get rid of Brett. It's a shame that I'm set up with these bunch of misfits because I should be here with superstars. You know, uh, Brett's won two individual immunities. He could possibly win the last two, but what's two immunities? If Jason can win two in a row, anybody can win two in a row. That means absolutely nothing to me. So you telling me he's all of a sudden Superman because he wins two? He, he's not some superstar to me. You start thinking that, you start getting weak in the mind, thinking you can't beat him like he's stepping in the ring with Mike Tyson. He's no Mike Tyson. He's Brett. Brett has it. Brett wins immunity. For the third time in a row, Brett wins individual immunity. Well, 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 not Mike Tyson does win his third immunity challenge in a row, so I guess Natalie is a goner. She has made too many friends on the jury and she needs to go. So when they get back to camp and Russell tells her that he's going to save her, I get confused. Why? I mean, he's lied to people in the past before he votes them out, but why would you even tell her that? Just vote her out. Mick and Jay Sonderbear challenge threats to beat CGI Brett and don't have nearly as many friends on the jury. So Russell says that Jason can't beat him in votes at the end, but is weak in challenges. He says Mick could beat him in votes, but he could actually beat CGI Brett in a challenge. But my question is, what about Natalie? She's weak in challenges and she can beat him in votes. That's a deadly duo, but he doesn't see it that way at all. But let's discuss Mick or Jason. There's pros and cons to both. I could keep Mick, I could keep Jason. They both have goods and bads. So now I'm weighing it. What in the world am I supposed to do? I'm trying to keep Natalie because she's holding on my coattails. Who better to take the final two than her? There's no way she can beat me in votes. Russell clearly has not been paying attention at all as to who he has made enemies with and who she is being friends with. In a secret scene, we see Jason sweating bullets because he knows it's him. So he asks Natalie and she's like, ah, talk to Russell about it. I don't know anything. Jason then says, I'm not going to worry about it. Russell promised me final three and he's going to hold true to that. He has me feeling all cozy and safe. So at tribal council, I hate that I have to do this, but man, I got to keep to my strategic play. And I think this is the best move for me to win the game. Sorry, I had to do it. Bye. Jason, this has by far been the hardest vote uh, to date. Uh, sorry, but I am voting for you because it was just last minute um, scrambling and we just felt that Meg would have a better shot at uh, beating Brad at the next immunity. Good game. 14th person voted out and the eighth member of our jury. Jason. Jason, tribe has spoken. I'm kind of pissed off at Russell for uh, for blindsiding me this way. I, I would think that at least 
for a relationship that you had since day two, you at least let the guy know he's going home. So I, I don't think I'd be cheering for Russell on this one. Brett's a real good dude, you know, and I wonder, like, if this, if, in, a, in a veil of ignorance kind of sense, if I was just looking objectively at each one of them, I think Brett would probably deserve the money more than anybody else, or I'd rather have him have the money than anybody else, but can I go against both of and vote against him? I mean, that's the question. So, so dumb. He should have voted off Natalie. The Shambo vote followed by this may be Russell's worst moves all game. You know, besides fighting with future jury members. And what Jason says just reinforces his earlier statements on what he values in this game. Russell then talks to CGI Brett and I am baffled. I am completely baffled he's still doing this because look what he does here. You think you can beat me? I don't know. If I went to the final three and I got to choose, what I can promise you is me and you would be in the top three. Okay. Deal. Deal. Top three. Good man. If I win this challenge today, I'm 100% positive that the game is mine. I won the million dollars. Dude, no. Who cares if you're in the final three or not if CGI Brett wins immunity? You literally cannot win against him. So after the final four goes through with the rites of passage and reminisces on all the people Russell talks smack about, we go to the immunity challenge where... No, I gotta be honest with you guys. I think Monica was the fakest person here. I think, well, I think this challenge is on. Mick is the first one out of the challenge. Natalie's now out of the challenge. We're down to two. Brett falls off. Russell wins the final individual immunity challenge. That was clutch. CGI Brett will be gone and Russell needs to find a way to get these swing votes on the jury to his side because there are far too many people in Natalie's corner so far. Back at camp, he is so so cocky. Natalie strokes his ego by saying, hey, you did a good job. And he talks to CGI Brett and says, the deal is going to be broken. I have to vote you out. Now, is this a dumb move? I mean, it was from the moment he made the deal. Uh, this isn't the dumb move. The dumb move was earlier when he made the deal. However, the sad music playing underneath means we should be sympathizing with both men, especially Russell. After all, he had to make a hard decision. Woe is him. CGI Brett bluntly states that I guess Russell isn't a man of his word. Well, duh. At Tribal Council, Russell says that CGI Brett should be in the final three. It's only fair. Why is Russell saying this in front of the jury? Why would he say he's about to vote him off? What is he like? What is the thought process here? He says this as if he has no power over who's going to be voted off next when he very much does. So they all go to vote. Hey, man, you played a great game. If I wasn't here, you probably would have won it all. But I had to stop you. You know, I'm looking forward to getting together with you and doing some great things outside of this game. Good luck, man. Brett, I'm voting for you uh, because uh, foe a foe until the end, and we have no shot at beating you uh, at the final, so come on. 15th person voted out and the ninth and final member of our jury, Brett. Brett, the tribe has spoken. I, I definitely respect the game that Natalie and Mick played. I mean, they didn't have to be the devilish character, quote unquote, the person that was going around, stirring up trouble, making making big decisions and doing all that. So they played the game with honesty, integrity, which I have mad respect for. And Russell kind of did the dirty work. And so, you know, I still have respect for them because they were able to get to where they needed to go, which is standing in the final three. And they still have, you know, a certain level of respect intact. I bet those final words from CGI Brett don't come as a shock to you. Of course he respects anyone but Russell. It's now day 39, and in a secret scene with Russell, we see him cut down the Iga flag and paint it to say foa foa once more. Galoo has been conquered. They then get their day 39 breakfast, and uh, I think Russell might be drunk on orange juice. They're gonna say I took you the whole way. And they're gonna say, you couldn't have made it without Russell. What you gonna say? Yeah, it's in God's hands that. at this point. If I'm not meant to win, that's fine. I'm happy I made it to the third. <laughs> you see, you yeah, ain't been thinking about your speeds too much Russell, then. Guess what? Look who I lined with from the first day. Oh, you? so you saying you set up the line? No, I'm no, just I'm saying. No, I'm being them. I'm, okay. If you want second place, you have to do better than that. Mm. The nice guy and the nice girl. Have they outwitted me? Have they mm. outplayed me? If they have, then give them the money because they deserve it. Don't make me make you look stupid on the jury. This game ain't over, girl. I'll put you in the jury. 
ease up. I think there may be a little bit of strategy involved to wrestle, making us feel like we're not gonna win or that we don't have a chance, but I have uh, news for him. I'm not gonna give up, and I'll just explain to the jury, I don't work the same way as wrestle. That would clearly not have worked for me. The girls that were aggressive, they got eliminated early. My strategy was to be myself, and at the end of the day, you know, I wasn't out to get anybody or make anybody look bad. Russell made it clear he was okay with making people look bad. Say y'all, I think the book is gonna go. Demo, Dave, Brett, John, Eric, that's five. I am another millionaire. I meant he's drunk with power. He is way out of hand here and threatening to put Natalie on the jury. What is going on? So it's time for final tribal council. <laughs> It is time. Let's quickly recap what we know about the nine jurors and where they stand in the order they were booted. Eric is up in the air at the moment as we didn't see him connect with any of the FOA FOA members. Kelly is so anti-Russell it isn't funny and is also one of Laura's BFFs. And speaking of Laura, she's so pro Natalie and they were friends. John Fincher is pro Russell, no doubt. Dave Ball, I feel like he's leaning towards Natalie due to the snippets we see of him and her along with Russell offering a deal at the last minute and breaking it. Monica is BFFs with Laura as well and clearly didn't like Russell. Shampo is pro Russell and considering he was the only person we saw her connect with, yeah, I think she's voting for him. Jason is likely anti-Russell. He has shown his hand multiple times as to what he values in this game along with Russell breaking his final three deal with him and CGI Brett. I mean, we know he's pro Natalie. That's obvious. So by my count, we have four clear votes for Natalie, two for Russell, and three that are seemingly up for grabs. Russell needs five to win. So we get to Russell's opening speech and... I came here to do what I said I was going to do and try to make it all the way to the top and win the game. I made huge strategic moves all the way through the game. My first strategic moves were in my own tribe, Marisa and Betsy. Those were the two that said, get rid of Russell, get rid of Russell. Guess who goes first? Marisa and Betsy. I solidified myself with Shambo to get rid of Kelly. It was a huge move. It didn't change the game yet. Laura was the biggest move, I think, of the game. Then John comes to me after it's over. We got to get rid of a full foe. Well, I can't do that, so I have to get rid of John. Then it just went like dominoes from there. Now, I ask you, if either one of these outwit me, then give them the money. If either one of these outplayed me, then give them the game. But you know what? I don't think that they have. It's not bad as he does name things he has done in this game, even though some of them were pre-jury, but people almost none of them have met. However, the bad part here is that he doesn't show respect for the jury. He explains them all like pawns in his game. And while it's entertaining for us, it has been shown time and time again that you must respect the jury to get their vote and he's not doing it. Jason is the first juror to speak and he simply states that Russell's rich, Mick is a doctor, and Natalie had to quit her job to come here. Shambo is next and she just hammers Mick by calling him feckless and saying, Natalie, you were just behind Russell as he did all the work. She is so obviously pro Russell. CGI Brett is third and he asks Mick a question that reveals that Mick learned nothing about him and never made the time to get to know him. Kelly is fourth and she asks Russell, You've said many times you're gonna lie, cheat, and steal your way through this game. Does that apply to your real life also? No, not at all. I am 100% different outside of this game. I'm not like this at all. I'm a totally different person outside this game. Instead of lie, cheat, and steal, in real life, maybe what well, three words that would replace that? It might be hard to believe, but uh, honor, integrity, and loyalty. Russell, it's hard for me to sit here and believe that from you. Honor, integrity, and loyalty is the most important thing to you. It is the most important thing to me. He sounds so disingenuous. Why is he lying to the jury? They aren't going to be fooled by this. It almost feels kind of disrespectful to treat them this way. Like Russell's their parent and he's trying to pull a fast one on a bunch of four-year-olds. 
And uh, yeah, they're not a bunch of four year olds. Monica is the fifth juror and she asks why the others don't deserve the money. He didn't mind when I was being a snake and give me high fives every time we vote somebody off. I never get Natalie high fives. didn't mind when I was being a snake and giving me high fives when I voted everybody off. The two honest people here, they would congratulate me. Good job. That was probably the one of the best jobs in history, Russell. You are doing the, you are running, you should win this game. You're running the show here. They both didn't mind following the snake right behind me the whole step of the way. I mean, his ego is killing this thing, but what else is new? Monica nor Kelly were going to vote for him, but they both got him to act like a fool in front of everyone else. Dave simply asks everyone, hey, what do you think your chances are in this game? And Russell replies, it was much higher when it came in, but now it's down to a low low 55 percent laura is seventh she asked russell what he learned about her that led him to beating her in this game he says he saw how big of a target she was how important she was how she was leading others and that she needed to go and surprisingly he is flattering here not that that will change her vote but it's something he should have considered before he burned her earlier in this game john is eighth and he asked mick and nally why he should vote for them mick says i am a great loyal humble guy someone you can trust which is fake humility of course and nally's basically told by john that russell did the dirty work for her she says she couldn't be aggressive that strategy wouldn't have worked literally all of the foe foe women were voted off because they were even slightly aggressive with russell and of course once you reach the merge why would you start being aggressive when the game plan's working perfectly it didn't make any sense john doesn't buy this though even though everything she said is completely true so that leaves us with the final juror in eric russell this hurts me we had nothing in common you played an unethical game admittedly played an unethical game but you sit there proud of it natalie people will call you weak People will say that you are undeserving. Why are those characteristics any less admirable as lying, cheating, and stealing? Why does he get a free pass, but your wrong way of playing is admonished? You would say that you are probably the least deserving of the title of sole survivor. But maybe, just maybe, in an environment filled with arrogance, delusional entitlement, maybe the person who thinks that she's least deserving is probably the most. You got my vote. I hope you get four more. Congratulations. Eric nailed it. He absolutely nailed it. But as Russell said right before Final Tribal when he went off on Natalie, he would be shocked if he lost this game. After all, he used his Houdini magic to be the Babe Ruth and Picasso of Survivor. So before we reveal the votes and see who won, let's montage the man who told the jury that he is 100% different outside this game. He's actually full of honor, integrity, and loyalty. I plan on making it as miserable as possible, making it hell for everybody to get what I want. My strategy is to be able to have a secret alliance with each one of these dumb girls. I like to call it my dumbass girl alliance. Right now, I think I am running the whole show. and They don't even know it but I know I am. I'm not here for the money. I'm only here to show people how easy it is to win this game. You can call me the puppet master. They can be my little puppets. They'll run when I tell them to run. They'll walk when I tell them to walk. When I'm finished with them, just throw them in the trash. I have the immunity idol without any letters or anything. I just use my brilliant brain to figure out where it was. I'm running this whole show right now. I'm the boss. Nobody here is playing the game. Nobody is playing the game but me on my tribe. I don't, this might be the worst group in history, and I might be the best. I'm gonna have them all under control like zombies walking around. Mm. It is shocking that these people trust me so much. I mean, they really do. Everybody here trusts me. So I would have to take somebody like Natalie with me because she's gonna ride my coattails the whole way. She's too stupid to do it by herself. She needs me. This is so stupid. I don't even see how she can walk without falling down. This is ridiculous. These idiots are probably going to cost me a million dollars. And I plan on having a lot of fun with the money. A lot of fun. I'm too good for this game. I'm, I'm too sly. And now I got to make sure my seed is planted in all these dumbasses' heads. You ever heard of a man named Babe Ruth? He struck out more than anybody ever. But you know what? He also hit the most home runs. So that tells me one thing. Keep swinging, baby. <laughs> Eventually, you're gonna hit one. <laughs> My work is done. It's like a painting, like a Picasso. You know, he's he's a great artist. This is my artwork. This might be one of my best.
pieces of work I've ever done. That's gonna be a pretty expensive sale. They write me a check for a million dollars for this work. So, so I can take that, take that to the bank. When it comes down to brass knuckles and it's just me and you and somebody else, you have to swear to me. You ain't gonna think that I'm gonna beat you because I played the game better and vote me on. Swear on Mick. You gonna start thinking that's a lot of money. Your brain's gonna start working. Who better to take? There's no way she can beat me in votes. She followed and did everything I told her to do. She wouldn't even know how to talk. She might even say, oh, he's right, give it all to him. Monica, she had to run her little pie hole. The little bitch needs to be sent home tonight. It is done. They say don't get confident in this game. You know what? I'm confident as a hell. I'm trying to keep Natalie because she's holding on my coattails. Who better to take the final two than her? There's no way she can beat me in votes. If I win this challenge today, I'm 100% positive that the game is mine. I won the million dollars. If you want second place, you have to do better than that. Don't make me make you look stupid on the jury. This game ain't over, girl. I'll put you in the jury. I'll tell you how I think the vote is gonna go. Jambo, Dave, Brett, John, Eric, that's five. I am another millionaire. First vote. Rattley. Russell. Russell. Natalie. Natalie. The winner of Survivor Samoa. Natalie. In a rare move, I want to do an epilogue to cover the post-game shenanigans of Russell and Natalie because Russell doesn't get it. He has, at this point, played two seasons of Survivor, and he doesn't get how Natalie won, as we see at the live reunion. But do you agree that, that this game does come down to getting a vote? Did Natalie have a better social game? I had Jay Song, I had Mick, Natalie, Shambo. They trusted me. That's why they stayed with me. I feel like that I played the best strategic game in history. There's no regrets how I play the game. I don't regret anything that I did. Because, I, I mean, leave it to me to say, one of those dumbass girls beat your ass for a million dollars. Get to the end, please your jury. That's it. Russell never cared about the jury, and it shows. Need some more proof? Well, despite winning fan favorite and getting $100,000, which only boosts his ego up more than he needs, he taunts Jason by saying, here, Jason, I got a pair of socks to make up for the pair that I burned. And as he goes to give it to him, he throws it in the fire. Because why not? This reminds me of Boston Rob and Amber, minus the romance, the uh, Russell Natalie thing. Especially since both Boston Rob and Russell have a question for the winner about what they care about the most. Boston Rob, of course, proposed marriage to Amber, but Russell asks, All I want is the title of So Survive. <laughs> <laughs> I will pay you $10,000 for the title. I'm gonna decline Russell's offer in order to win the title of Soul Survivor. No, it's priceless. You have to get the majority wow. of the vote. All right, Russell. I would have taken that money. I'll call you Soul Survivor for 100 grand the rest of your life. But now to put the cherry on top. The next day, Russell and Natalie appear on TV for her to get her million dollar check and look at his face while it happens. I know the man, uh, the man right next to you, Russell, this has got to make you just seethe knowing that you were so close. You were the odds on favorite yet you're the guy that's looking at the one million dollar check rather than cashing it yeah it's uh i don't think she deserves it that's my opinion uh i think the world doesn't think she deserves it because you know what she didn't even get in the top three for fan favorite ultimately uh the person that wins and deserves to win is the person that gets the majority of the jury vote yeah. you know, and, you know, and you, know so when, you know when you play a football game and you're the quarterback to the football game, I'm throwing all the touchdown passes, right? Yeah. She wasn't even on the field. Yeah. She was my cheerleader. Well, guess so, what? Well, guess what? She, guess what? She, I'm gonna she, laugh she, all the way to the she, bank, so. <laughs> So let's break this down. How was Russell Hans as a character? In my opinion, he was amazing. Absolutely amazing. He was electric in nearly every episode. I've watched the season so many times now and Russell just makes this 
show work. Anything he's involved with is exciting and honestly he's a top three character of the show and the way this season plays out makes it a top five maybe a top three season for me. I love Russell Hans as a character. He played the villain in a way that is only truly comparable to Fair Play but lacked the awareness to know that he was just burning his game in the process. His constant finding a someone to be his enemy was fun to watch and CGI Brett being the final boss for him had me in stitches especially when I learned he wasn't Mike Tyson. He's Brett. They gotta bring Russell back. Out of 53 character moments shown on the show, 13 were anti-heroic and 40 were villainous, making Russell Hans a villain character on Survivor Samoa, as if any of us are surprised by that result. Now, how is Russell Hans as a strategist? I mean, this is a tale of two games. In terms of reaching the end, Russell went all out 110% on making sure he reached the final three no matter what. His idol finds are legendary and his gameplay was constantly entertaining through and through. He's so quotable. However, with all of his resources poured into reaching the end, he basically ignored the jury. He treated them like pawns in his game of chess and didn't seem to respect them at all. His best bet was to sit next to either Shambo, Jason, or Mick at the end, and yeah, he blew that. He underestimated Natalie, and he paid $900,000 for it. He made the jury bitter, and he earned his loss. I can only hope he learns from this when he does play again. Out of 80 strategic moments shown on the show, 41 were smart and 39 were dumb, making Russell Hans a smart strategist on Survivor Samoa. Thank you for watching, and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.